Hi, and thank you so much for tuning into Lex Play today. I'm so excited to take you on a tour of my own island, Lorien. I'm just going to visit via local play and show you guys around. Uh, I would show you on that island, except I made it on a switch flight, so that's why I wasn't able to tour it previously. If you would like to join me as I tour, I'll go ahead and put my dream address up on the screen so that you can follow along. And as you can see, Lost Falls is really coming along. I really like what I'm doing here design-wise, but I thought Lorien would be a good option for seeing some more terraforming. So this is Lorien's flyover. I'm super happy with it right now. I'm not sure if the pumpkin patch is going to be a permanent part of my island or not yet, but right now I'm happy with the way that it looks. I think it's so cute to see the villagers walking through and look at me waving to myself. Okay, so first off, I just want to draw your attention to my Lorien flag. I made it myself and while I'm definitely not great at pixel art, I'm proud of myself for even managing this to be honest. So just a little shout out to past Lex for creating something. And then, as you know, Lexception, it's happening again. My hair is darker because I'm too cheap to buy the other hair colors at the Nook Stop, but it still stands we're the same. So for my entrance, I really wanted to reflect Rivendell a lot here. Um, I carried over a lot of elements like the benches here and the fountain up on the cliff. Uh, I just really loved the way the cliffs looked on Rivendell, so I wanted to carry that. And then if you go immediately to the left, I have this cute little seating area. It's really nice when there's a villager crossing the bridge. Very picturesque. And then over here on the beach, I have this little beachfront flower shop concept. Uh, I loved the idea of there being a greenhouse here, and then it just kind of turned into a plant shop slash almost wedding reception. Uh, the roofing is inspired by Poppy Pier Crossing. I'll link their Instagram in my description. And I've blocked this off from the airport, so it's just a nice little outlet. Over to the left, I've created like little seating areas with earthy tones. I really like the way this area turned out. I think it's just so pretty. And then right up from the beach, I have a reading nook, and you'll find that that's a very big theme on Lorien, reading nooks all over the place. And right over this bridge is Lolly's house. I love her house colors. I think her house just really fits the vibe of my island, like the foresty theme. And I really like the way the well looks here, especially in this customization. She has her own private beach, sort of, even though I didn't do that intentionally, but she's usually the only one over here. It surprises me that Tosh is walking through now. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to bring a pop of color to Lorien, so you'll see blues throughout the island here. On this little lighthouse lookout, I incorporated a lot of blue. You'll also see it near Sherb and Blue Bear's houses for obvious reasons. Which reminds me, I didn't show you my map, but better late than never. My villagers here are 10 of my dreamies, actually. I've got Wolfgang, Kiki, Bob, Lolly, Tasha, Raymond, Rudy, Sherb, Blue Bear, and Deirdre. Deirdre's my favorite sister, Lee, and I don't know, I just think these villagers are so cute. But as you can see, Sherb and Blue Bear together, and I made that kind of another spot where I put a lot of blue. But yeah, so this is Deirdre's house. I put a lot of orange for her because I read somewhere online that orange was her favorite color and I try to do right by my villagers. I made the beach pretty simple because it's super extravagant in other areas and I think it's cool to have nice calm areas on your island as well. It doesn't have to be completely full to be a beautiful island. Then I've got this, as promised, another reading nook already. I just really think this one turned out so classy and pretty. I just love it.
up here I envision this as a dock like if there were boats in the game you would get on and off of them here at this rock and I imagine people just sitting here waiting for their boats or for their friends and family I just really loved the green and orange vibes here Here we have Bob's house. I felt like pansies really fit both his vibe and his house's vibe, so I'm really happy with this wreath. And I gave him a little duck pond with a waterfall, because every villager deserves a waterfall and a duck pond, to be honest. Up this beach, I've just got a sort of winding path. Um, I just wanted to incorporate lots of greens, earthy tones yet again. And I wasn't sure what to do with my rocks, but I don't know, I think this turned out pretty cute. I love the little leaves and the hedges, and I think it has a nice, like, elegant, classy look somehow. Just down here, this is right behind Deirdre's house, but this is Tasha. I love the way her house is colored, and inside it has the stormy wall. So that's just really cool to look at. And I'm not a huge fan of black flowers, but this was the one place I felt like I could incorporate them and not hate them. So I hope Tasha likes them as well. She has that moody vibe, I think she does. Back here at the very back of my island, I've placed the museum and I wanted a very grand area because that is what Blathers deserves, let's be honest. Uh, I just really love the way this looks with the Valiant statues, the waterfalls, I think it all just came together really nicely and I'm super proud of this area. Just to the right over here is Raymond's house. Uh, I gave him gold roses and a gold wreath just for fun because I couldn't really find anything I thought matched his house super well. Which, by the way, you can get villagers to hang up wreaths if you gift them wreaths. They'll hang them up on their door the very next day. And Wolfgang, hi! Up here is Sherb and Blue Bear's houses. I really love the blue here. I love how like colorful their houses are because I usually pick villagers that have very neutral houses. But these are so nice. They're very refreshing. And then Sherb's backyard is this glamorous waterfall area to complement the museum. Then sort of hidden away back here, I've placed Wolfgang's house because I've always pictured him as the sort of cranky that like wants to be secluded and separated from the other villagers. So I just really liked having his house back here surrounded by cliffs and trees and just really having that cabin in the woods vibe even though he has a very elegant styled house. And I gave him this sunken waterfall. A lot of people have asked me how to construct this or how long it took or how I managed to get all the cliffs back up around this water. And if you stay tuned, that's actually gonna be my first terraforming tutorial. I'm going to recreate this area so that you can see exactly how I did it, how I balanced the water in the cliffs, how I got the tree in there, everything like that. I'm super excited to share because sunken waterfalls are my favorites. And back down here, I've got this bridge that leads into the path to Red's Beach. And this area actually right here was inspired by Carbonara Crossing on Instagram. I'll link her page in the description if you'd like to check it out but I just love the way she used her Zen bridges. So I wanted to use one here, surrounded by water, just because I thought it was so beautiful on her island. And then this path is sort of inspired by Rivendell as well. Kind of like my entrance. So is this like black market sort of area. It's supposed to be like a place to hide Red's wrongdoings. If we keep edging along the back of my island, I have two more residential houses. I have Kiki and Rudy, who have almost matching houses if you look at them. Like, their house colors are almost identical. Uh, I wanted them to frame this little sunken waterfall slash waterfall overlook, and I think it turned out really nice. Like, I'm very proud of this area as well. I really think it's very calming, especially at this time around sunset. 
And I've given Kiki this sort of little reading nook as well because I read somewhere that she is an aspiring writer and she loves to read, which checks out. I always see her with her books. So I just wanted to give her a little space for reading. And then I gave Rudy a clothesline because I figured with all that working out, he probably had a lot of laundry to catch up on. Over here is one of my newer areas. I kind of just placed this for fun to fill space and I like how it turned out actually. I like the color palette here. As always, we've got the earthy browns, dark greens. I even time traveled to summer so that the grass would be a dark green instead of like a dead yellow. And then this is my campfire. I just really loved the planks under this campfire. I thought it looked so cute. And this is another simple beach design that I tried because I wasn't really trying to clutter up my whole beach, but it looked so weird to me empty. So I just put some flowers, some custom designs, some models, called it a day. And then I've got my beach rocks and you can come here and paint or you can just pretend you're Venus because if you look at it from this angle, you really are. Uh, just let it happen. You are being birthed as Venus. That aside, I really like my pottery rock. I use a lunar lander here as a kiln. Um, to my mind, that just made more sense than the clay furnace. This looks more like a kiln in my opinion. And then this ring toss I'm kind of using is like failed pottery. Also, if you're curious, you can't place rugs outside. This is a custom design and I'll make sure to include the code for that in the description. Here we have a wishing well. I know it doesn't make sense to have a well on the beach, but you know, it's for wishing. You don't need to drink water from a well if it's been used for throwing coins in. You know, like, maybe it's a salt water well, who knows. Just don't question the structural integrity of the sand. And then this is my nook's cranny. I really wanted to have like an in the forest vibe. I want it to be nestled away, not really in a grand shopping area. I thought that fit Lorian's vibe a lot better to just have it tucked away. And bordering it is this greenhouse that I'm just in love with. This is also a callback to Rivendell because on Rivendell my greenhouse was one of my favorite areas. It bordered my rainbow garden and it was just really nice. And this is my Able Sisters shop. I'm not sure if I'm entirely happy with this setup yet. I might renovate it soon, try to elevate it somehow because it's not as grand or as pretty as I usually make my Able Sisters shops, at least in my opinion. But I like it for now. I think it's a cute little setup for Mabel and Sable. Then this beach was inspired by Mika's Crossing. I'll link their Instagram in the description as well. This is a cafe that kind of bleeds into the area inspired by them. I just really liked how they used planks and hedges. And then on my pier, I just put the lighthouse because I wasn't sure what else to do. I have never been able to design my pier well and that stands true even today. At the bottom of my beach, I really wanted like Mad Hatter picnic vibes. It's somehow both fancy and eccentric, like it doesn't, I don't know, it just has a, an interesting vibe. Also a tip I have, put seaweed on a barrel because it's so cute. Down here near the bottom of my map, I've put my campsite. I let it border the beach because I really wanted there to be a bonfire, but it didn't really look right on the grass near the campsite. So I just have this campsite really tucked away here at the bottom of the map. I think it has really nice like riverside views and it just felt realistically like a camping trip to me. Like you're just camping out by the water. I don't know, I'm gonna be honest, I've never camped, but that's how I imagine it in my ideological mind. Also, of course, I've included some marshmallows over a fire.
And just up this passage, we're back near the entrance to Lorien. Uh, this is my pumpkin patch, one of my newest builds on this island. As I said, I'm not sure if it's gonna be permanent. I'm not sure how happy I am with it, but the idea here is that this big pumpkin is not a carriage, but the pumpkin I'm gonna be taking to the county fair was the idea I had in mind. So that's why it's like in the middle of the patch. It's like about to be carted off to the contest, hopefully to win. The area around resident services was actually the first part of my island that I terraformed. Uh, I really enjoyed terraforming the back here. I really like the way it turned out. I think it's just really pretty. And then over to the left here is my house. I think this is a really nice area. It's the area that was visible from the seating area by the beach. Uh, this is the bridge I like to watch my villagers cross because I think it's very photogenic, but yeah, this is right beside my house. It's always laundry day for Lex of Lorien. I usually have my mailbox here, but it's currently in the other Lex's pockets because I was trying to take mailbox photos and failing. I absolutely did not succeed and that's okay. This is my house and I'm actually not going to tour it today because I plan on doing a separate video just focusing on my house for people who are more interested in interior designs. So keep an eye out for that. I will show you my house, just not today. This is one of my favorite photo spots. You can probably tell that from my Instagram as well. I just love to come here and snap a picture like while the camera's moving i guess that's a tip i have for you like if you can't seem to get a good angle don't be afraid to just take a picture in the middle of the camera moving i usually find that i get better angles like that and then over here this is another early terraforming area and this just leads back to deirdre and all of that so i think i've pretty much covered every part of my island. That was a lot quicker than I thought it'd be. I, I love the terraforming here on Lorien. I'm probably gonna use some of the same elements when I start really working on Lost Falls. I've yet to unlock terraforming because I've only had the island for a few days, but I can't wait to start designing again because just going through Lorien like this reminds me of why I wanted a new island. I just love so much to have decorating freedom but I'm so attached to my other island, I just, I couldn't bring myself to flatten the Lorien like that. Psych, I've also got this waterfall area right beside Nook's Cranny. I think it just really looks nice. I love nestling the trees up on the cliffs to give like a nice waterfall and forest vibe. I like the subtle colors there. I don't know, I just think it turned out really well altogether. If you enjoyed this island tour, please consider submitting your own island for a tour on my channel. I would love to feature you on my new YouTube and I'd love to see your designs. Thank you so much for being here. If you liked my island, please leave a like and a comment and subscribe. And of course, the video would not be complete without a message from my little sister. Stay safe, everybody.